Hi guys, in this video I'm going to try and explain to you in sort of easy layman's terms how to check your SWR on your antenna and what equipment you'll need. Well first off you obviously need a CB and then you need an SWR meter or swear meters as they're commonly known. That's one type there. This is a more basic one. This is a Moonraker one, it's a bit sorry for itself. It's just got like your switches for forward and uh, reflected. Or you've got something a little bit more elaborate like this one. But they all basically do the same thing, okay? So you need a meter, your CB and a patch lead. Now a patch lead is just a short length of coax that goes from your CB radio to your meter. Okay, we call that a patch lead. They're normally about a foot or so long. Okay, now we're going to presume that you have got that and uh, you're sort of good to go. You may well be having SWR problems and probably that's why you're watching this video. Okay. Right, now things you want to avoid, obviously, is high SWR. And high SWR appears around about here. And that is what we call the big two. And that little nick on the top there that's like, a, if your needle was there, it'd be a 2 to 1 SWR, you know, and obviously you can be in the red, you don't want to be in there, okay. Right, I'll show you the SWR on this particular antenna on the frequencies that I'm going to be using, okay. That is my SWR reading there, which is perfectly acceptable. And it's near enough set, I could turn it up a little bit more. So, let's just presume you've got a 40 channel rig and you want to check your SWR. Now the way I do it, go to channel 1, which we're on, which is my, my lowest frequency. Key the rig up and you turn uh, your little dial until the meter goes on to set. Now on your swirl meter, it may well say FWD. So at this point you would have your meter switch to FWD, which stands for forward. Key up, rotate the dial on the meter until the needle goes to the set position. Now this one does it all at once. Now on yours, to, to then get an SWR reading, you flick it the switch down to where it may well say SWR or REF. Now once you've done that you key your rig again. Now that SWR is fine, nothing wrong with that at all. So that's the equipment you need but most of you already have that equipment and, and may well be having SWR problems where you, you know you're looking at an SWR up here you know, or even worse, right off the end. Now one of the first things to consider, if your SWI is right off the scale, is if you've got any shorts, you know, you want to make sure that you are receiving. Now, that's another video, really, to check if you've got any shorts, but let's pr just presume your aerial's new, everything's new, and you're not sure, your SWI's a little bit high, okay? So, what I do, I've got my lowest frequency. We're just doing one band at the moment. One band mean, meaning 40 channels. So key up on channel one. There we are. And go to channel 40. There we are. Yeah, it's even better. I will just tweak that very slightly. Just to bring the needle to the set, don't really make a great deal of difference. 
So on this particular antenna, on those particular frequencies, it's fine. But if you was to be having uh, a high SWR on either channel 1 or channel 40, forget the, the channels in between for the moment, because they will be high as well. If your SWR is higher on your highest channel, it means your antenna needs to be shortened a little bit. So all you do is undo the Allen keys on your antenna, on your mobile whip, slide the antenna in a little bit. And what you're looking to do is achieve the same SWR on channel 1 and channel 40, around about where it says 1.5 or below. Now I've had antennas where you key up and the SWR meter don't move at all, now that's great. But if you find yourself going around in circles and you know, you're full of uncertainty, just remember, the higher up in channel you go, the shorter the antenna has to be. The lower down in channel or frequency you go, the longer the antenna has to be. If you imagine a seesaw, one end you've got the antenna, the other end is your channel knob, and as that end goes down, the antenna has to be longer, so it goes up the other end. Now, there is a quick and easy way of checking exactly what is going on with your antenna to see whether it's too long or too short. Now, we'll be covering that in part two. You don't need any extra equipment. You just need uh, either very long arms or an assistant. So watch out for part two, which will show you a quick and easy way of knowing what's going on with your antenna, whether it be too long or too short. Okay, this is the demonstration of what, how you can easily decide if your air is too long or too short by getting someone to put their hand near the antenna while you're transmitting. Not actually touching it, just putting the hand near it. Right, if I key up, Deb, put your hand near the antenna. You see that? Away. Near it. That'll do. Thank you. So, by someone putting a hand near the antenna, the SWR goes down, tells you the aerial is not long enough. Now if Deb put a hand near the antenna and the SWR went up, it means the antenna's too long. It's as quick and as easy as that. And once you've gone through that process, you can then get working on your antenna. Well I hope that helps and look out for the next video.